with watercolor techniques, first thing we want to think about is the paper, okay? This what we set up is on a, a thinner piece of watercolor paper, all right? But it, you can see when you paint on it, it does have a little bit of a texture, a little bit of a tooth in there. So the stroke, the actual pigment, as you apply it to the surface, is going to look very different on the type of paper that you're using. On this type of heavier paper like we used on our other project, you're going to get a much different line or much different stroke, brush stroke, and color. So if I'm trying to recreate a similar look to this on a dry surface, and I go in with the same technique that I just did to create this wash on a thicker, heavier tooth paper, you're going to see a much different outcome because the thickness, the rigidity of the paper, all right, really allows for the paper to absorb the pigment that much better. It's going to dry a little bit darker, okay? And you can see the difference already. Even though this is a, they're both dry surfaces, this one's already dry, you can see the way the pigment looks on that particular surface. It looks a little different, and that's just because of the paper itself, all right? There's a different tooth, a different texture, and a different look. Now, in the watercolor techniques, this is all dry surface, all right? So what I did here in this section, we're going to be doing something called a one color overlap, all right? You have to have a color down first to do a dry overlap technique. So I put this color down, it's just a blue green. I put that down a while ago and I let it dry. This one here is also going to be a dry overlap, but it's gonna be a textural wash. So I put the basic flat, you know, yellow brown wash down, I let it dry, and then later I'm going to put some texture over top of it. The purpose of this exercise at the front here is to deal with the understanding of dry overlap. As we have the transparency of the color, we want to see what happens when we layer, okay? Watercolor is transparent. It creates that luminous glow from the white of the paper showing through. So if I come into this section here with a similar color. So I'm going to come back to my green and the blue and I'm going to go in with a second layer and maybe a little bit more pigment. You can see how much I've added a little bit more pigment in there. It's not as soft or as transparent as the wash. If I come in on this half of it, you can still see the transparent quality of it. And I'm just using a square brush and trying to pull the pigment across on the dry surface. All right, so that's a dry overlap technique. And it just creates darker values and different values of whatever color I'm trying to use. If I wanted that to be even darker, I could come back and get more pigment, and I could add more pigment into it, but you see it just kind of pulls the pigment around. It doesn't make it too dark. It just absorbs into the paper, and I can make it a little bit darker, but it's still an always maintains that transparent nature of watercolor. All right. I clean my brush out. This is exactly the same color. I just did this one with a second layer of that color. Now, in this section here, what we're doing are we're doing brush strokes on a dry surface with different pressure. So I got to wet my brush, but my surface is going to stay dry. I'm going to take just a couple colors here, I'll get a little bit of a red, maybe a little reddish brown. I don't want to just stick totally to pure hues. So I can mix up a little bit of an interesting color. All right. Notice even in the tray here, you can still see the transparent quality of the color. When I start in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary my pressure in my brush stroke. And if I start off really thin and then add pressure, You can see, I'm using a round brush, all right, I can create very, very thin brush strokes and medium thickness, and I can get much thicker. You'll also notice as I go that the pigment that's in the brush starts to get lighter. All right, so if I kept going, you would see almost like a gradation of color but I have a good amount of pigment in the brush. So if I vary pressure, thin, add pressure, lift, add pressure, lift, 
add pressure. You can see how you can vary the line weight of the form, whether I'm doing curved lines or straight lines. All right, adding and subtracting brush pressure will give you a different look. The last section I've got this dry overlap and I want to create a, a glaze. All right, it's called glazing. So if I wanted to, if I have this as a base color of something, I can use a glazing technique. So I'm just grabbing some orange here and I'm going into the orange with a good amount of pigment. All right, so I'm getting a good amount of orange on my brush. And I've got a little less water. It's not a full wash. So I'm just glazing. So I can still see some of the color underneath, but I'm just adding that transparency of another color on top. And it's a similar color to the, the yellow brown. All right, I just mixed up a yellow brown and I'm creating the orange over top. So let's say I was trying to create some type of pattern. All right, I could develop patterns using this technique of glazing or I could create rough textures so for example maybe I'll take a blue and a brown and not a lot of water and I wanted to kind of create some texture in there just using the brush in different ways. All right, so really just kind of see what happens when you're working with a wash on a dry surface. All right, my suggestion, after each section, go clean it, well, clean your brush and then go change out your water.